So our scripture passage for today, it picks up in Nehemiah chapter 8, starting in verse 13, and I invite you to follow along on the screens, that on October 9th, the family leaders of all the people, together with the priest and Levites, met with Ezra, the scribe, to go over the law in greater detail. As they studied the law, they discovered that the Lord had commanded through Moses that the Israelites should live in shelters during a festival to be held that month. He had said that a proclamation should be made throughout their towns and in Jerusalem, telling the people to go to the hills to get branches from olive, wild olive, myrtle, palm, and other leafy trees. They were to use these branches to make shelters in which they would live during the festival as prescribed in the law. So the people went out and cut branches and used them to build shelters on the roofs of their houses, in their courtyards, in the courtyards of God's temple, or in squares just inside the water gate and the Ephraim gate. So everyone who had returned from captivity lived in these shelters during the festival, and they were all filled with great joy. The Israelites had not celebrated like this since the days of Joshua, son of Nun. Ezra read from the book of the law of God on each of the seven days of the festival, and then on the eighth day, they held a solemn assembly as was required by the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So for several years, there's been a growing fascination with home improvement shows, and I, for one, I love watching a good home improvement show. You know, it's amazing how in less than an hour, we see a, a home completely transformed before our very eyes. It's amazing. You know, as you're watching it, you always see that before picture. You know, and it might be a home that was devastated by a storm. It might be a home that was simply not meeting the needs of, of the homeowner. It might be a home that was in need of a little TLC, some tender love and care could be a home that was simply outdated. And yet, in this lightning fast pace, we get to see it transformed before our very eyes. And one of my favorite moments is always at the end. Usually the music changes a little bit, that you kind of feel the suspense building. Oftentimes, many of these shows have kind of a catchphrase that you've been waiting to hear the entire time. Maybe it's something like, are you going to love it? Or are you going to list it? Or are you ready to see your fixer-upper? My favorite is, move that bus. <laughs> you may remember that one. Sometimes it's just a simple countdown, three, two, one, and then it's the big reveal. It's amazing. And usually people cheer, sometimes there's tears, and, and there's tears of joy, tears of gratitude, tears of celebration, as what's once maybe not something that they wanted or needed or had been devastated has been transformed to something made new. Now, every time I watch one of the home renovation shows, I'm always just a little bit curious of what happens next. Of what happened after the homeowner moved back in? I'd love to go back maybe a week later or a month later or a year later and see what happened next. And that's actually where our scripture picks up for today. We're at that moment of what happened next, that Nehemiah, he has led the people in renovating the wall of Jerusalem, a wall that had been broken down, that the city gates, they had been burned to the ground. Nehemiah and many others, they had put their heads down and they had worked and worked and worked to rebuild. And it hadn't been easy. There had been those who had tried to sabotage their work, those who had tried to get in the way of the rebuilding efforts, but despite the challenges, despite even the opposition, they kept going. And they finished the wall in record time. Now the wall, they believed, was two and a half miles around the city. And in many places, it was 40 feet high. And you know, they finished it in 52 days. 
52 days. It was incredible. And I love how Jacob Armstrong writes about this moment. He writes, the wall was strong again and the people felt strong again. The wall was beautiful again and the people felt beautiful again. That nearly 50,000 people who had been living in exile, who had been foreigners in a strange land, they came back to Jerusalem. That because of this beautiful renovation, nearly 50,000 people finally came home. It was a big moment. It was the big reveal. And so we ask ourselves, what happened next? What happened next? Well, that's when Ezra gathers the people. Ezra is a respected religious leader, and he reads words from the law, and this is what they heard. As they studied the law, they discovered that the Lord had commanded through Moses that the Israelites should live in shelters during the festival to be held that month. He had said that a proclamation should be made throughout their towns and in Jerusalem, telling the people to go to the hills, go get branches from olive, wild olive, myrtle, palm, and other leafy trees. They were to use these branches to make shelters in which they would live during the festival as prescribed by the law. That just as Christians have annual celebrations, like Christmas and Easter, Jews have annual celebrations too, like this one described in Nehemiah. Now this celebration, it's called Festival of the Booths. Some call it Festival of Tabernacles, and it's meant to remember, to commemorate that time in which God had saved the Israelite people from slavery in Egypt. And as they made their way through the wilderness, they had to live in tents, in temporary dwellings as they made their way to the promised land. Now, I want us to pause here for just a moment. Now, it's hard for us to really step into their shoes, but we're going to try as much as we can to put ourselves in their shoes, that the wall of Jerusalem has just been rebuilt, and it's beautiful. The rebuilding of the wall has inspired nearly 50,000 people to come back home. They've rebuilt their homes, they're reconnecting with their families, they're rebuilding their lives because their hope has been renewed. But then Ezra reminds the people of this annual festival, the Festival of Booths. It's a festival that they really hadn't celebrated much for years, and so what did the people do? They built temporary shelters, they put up tents, they moved outside for seven days to honor God's word and to remember what God had done for them. Can you imagine? Can you imagine moving back to your hometown? Because the city has been rebuilt and you've renovated your home, your renovation is complete, that the countertops are in, the paint is fresh, you can smell it, the bathrooms, they're shiny, they're new, they're beautiful. And then all of a sudden, you hear that there's this call to move outside, to put a tent up in the backyard or in the street, and you're going to stay there for seven days. Can you imagine how surprised they were? They were going to stay there for seven days. It was kind of one of those moments that's appropriate to say, huh? Are you sure? But that's what the Israelites did. They moved outside temporarily. And they moved outside to remember a time when they had no homes. To remember a time when they were wandering in the wilderness, both physically and spiritually. To remember a time when they were fixer-uppers. To remember a time where they were completely dependent upon God. To remember a time, a difficult time, that God had carried them through and brought them to the other side. Now, even though their city had been rebuilt, their homes were rebuilt, well, they didn't do this begrudgingly. They didn't think, oh, what an inconvenience. Or, oh man, can't we just do that next year? Well, they did this in celebration. Hearing this news, they celebrated, and they celebrated big. We read in verse 17, so everyone who had returned from captivity lived in these shelters during the festival, and they were all filled with great joy 
the Israelites had not celebrated like this since the days of Joshua, son of Nun. For a week, they did nothing but remember their story, honor and celebrate God as they remembered how their ancestors had believed in God's greatness, how their beautiful city had been restored long before they could even see it. You see, big reveals, they mean so much more when we take time to pause and remember. And I think we experienced this a few years ago when we celebrated our 150th anniversary as a church. Can you believe that our church is 153 years young? Now, we were a church before South Dakota was a state. We had a celebration, and actually the celebration lasted the whole year long. And one of the Sundays, we had Heritage Sunday where we looked backwards, where we celebrated the ways in which God has been at work in the past. And we invited Tom Roberts, and he came and he shared with us the story of Reverend Thomas Cuthbert. Now, Reverend Cuthbert, he was the very first pastor of our church. He was from England. He had settled a claim across the Big Sioux River in the area that's now the fairgrounds. Now, there were times where it was so difficult for him to get to church because the water was too high in the river. And I have to admit, these last couple weeks, I've been thinking about Reverend Thomas Cuthbert, <laughs> that he couldn't ford the river, and so they'd have to cancel church, and it made me really grateful to be the pastor in 2024 and not have to worry about getting on my horse and fording a river so that we could worship together. Yeah, I think about the resiliency of the people of this church, the ways in which God has been faithful for 153 years. So that's what we did on Heritage Sunday. And then a couple of weeks later, we had Homecoming Sunday, where we celebrated how God is at work in the present. And we had inflatables, and we had root beer floats, and we had food trucks, and we had so much fun that we've kept having a Homecoming Sunday every single year since, celebrating how God is working right now. And then a few weeks later, we had the big reveal. We had Celebration Sunday, celebrating how God is going to be at work in the next 150 years. Now, I have to admit that in 150 years, I'm not going to be here. And probably neither are you. But God will still be working. God will still be working, that God has a purpose, God has a plan for us, and God will still be working. And so we celebrated with expectancy, with joy, with anticipation of what God is going to do that we haven't even seen yet, that we have yet to see and yet to experience. And that's what Nehemiah and his contemporaries did. They took time to remember, to look backwards, at the ways in which God had been at work to remember where they came from. And then they reveled in the present goodness of God. And then they turned their attention to where God was leading them next. And so today, as we wrap up this sermon series on renovation, may we remember that true renovation, both in our church but also in our lives as individuals, is an ongoing process. No renovation on this side of heaven is ever permanent or complete. And that's true with buildings and institutions, and it's also true with people. And that's one of the reasons that we decided to do these t-shirts, that God is not done with us yet. We're always under construction, at least on this side of eternity. Today, we want to honor the ways in which God has been at work the ways in which God is working right now and the ways God will work in ways that we haven't even yet seen. Because we're going to begin worshiping in the multi-purpose room in a few weeks. Like those temporary shelters that the Israelites stayed in, we're going to worship in a temporary place. Now, thankfully, it's not going to be a tent. We're going to be in the multi-purpose room but we're going to be worshiping there temporarily until we await the big reveal that's to come.
But even as we wait for that big reveal, we thought it was important to pause and to say thank you. Thank you, God, for the ways you have worked in this place. Thank you, God, for the ways that you are working in this place. Thank you, God, for the ways that you will work in and through this place and this people. So we're gonna do something a little different today. Something that we probably haven't done maybe before or maybe for a while. And what I'm gonna invite is I'm gonna invite everybody to make your way to a wall in the sanctuary. And we're gonna lay hands on that wall. I'm gonna have Pastor Jordan demonstrate what we're talking about here. Isn't he lucky? <laughs> Now, I know for some of us it's going to be hard to do that um, because of mobility. And so for those, if you just want to put your hand on a pew, that is great as well. But I'm going to invite everybody to make your way to a wall to put a hand on it as we say a special blessing today. Now, for those who are worshiping online, I'm going to invite you to make your way to your device that's making it possible for us to worship together today and to lay your hand on that, that may that be the digital door that binds us all together. So I'm grateful Boyd's going to play a little bit and as we make our way to our spots so that we can give thanks for the ways in which God is working. Friends, let us pray together. Holy God, we give you thanks for this sacred place, a space where people have encountered your love and grace for generations, a space where countless baptisms, confirmations, weddings, celebrations of life, and times at your table feasting on your love through bread and the cup have taken place, a space where we have come to take refuge in the storms of life, a space where we have come to receive inspiration from your Holy Spirit, a space where we have come to praise you, O God of grace. For the memories that we cherish, we say thank you, God, for this sacred space. Holy God, in a few weeks, construction will begin, and we give you thanks for the ways that you are at work right now in the present. We pray for those who will be working in this sacred space. May they feel your love and grace for them as they work. For the memories that we are making, we say thank you, God, for this sacred space. Holy God, we look forward to what is to come. We look forward to the ways in which you will work in the future through this sacred space. Because we do not know what your renovation might set in motion, we wait expectantly for your continued presence with us in the weeks, months, and years to come. For the memories we have yet to make, we say thank you, God, for this sacred space. In Jesus' name, all the people say together, amen. I invite you to find your way back to your seat.